Yo, 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 what is going on, my beautiful brothers and sisters, fellow radiators of love? My name is Jamal Pope, a.k.a. J. Phoenix, and this is going to be your daily astrology forecast for Monday, February 26th of 2024. Thank you so much for joining me in this video. Hopefully you guys had a wonderful weekend and a very relaxing weekend myself, so nothing too crazy happening over here, just pretty chill and pretty relaxed, so... You know, I needed a I needed a weekend like that too. So let's go ahead and hop into these astrological transits for today, so we can see how you can be better prepared to navigate these celestial energies. Go go ahead and bring up that transit calendar for today. So we do have some interesting things happening. Of course, we do have Mars, which is squaring Jupiter, and then we do have the Moon that's going to be entering into Libra. And of course, we go into a building energy day on Tuesday, leading up to what I feel is probably the most important day of the month. The 28th, where we have the Sun, Mercury, Saturn, Kazemi, that's going to be happening here in Pisces. That's at the same time that the Moon's going to be entering into Scorpio. So let's go ahead and pull up the actual chart itself. All right. Bam. All right. So I have this set right now. It's 926 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We can see here that that Moon is going to be ingressing into Libra literally here within the next hour or so. By the time that you guys watch this, the moon will have shifted into Libra. We can also see that Mars at 10 degrees of Aquarius is making the square over to Jupiter. So we do have a Mars square Jupiter day. And that's going to bring about its fair share of challenges. You know, this Mars and Aquarius, you know, one needs to connect with people, especially after conjuncting with Venus, right? And then now it is it is lagging behind all the other planets, you know, with the exception of Pluto. Now it's kind of in the caboose, if you will. And, you know, this Mars and Aquarius, it's about taking those necessary actions to connect with people, but also, like I said, connecting in kind of like unique and innovative ways and not maybe, maybe not just completely relying on technology, if you will. It's about really connecting with people. You know, now, of course, with the square over to Jupiter, you know, this can help to expand certain relationships, but the values have to be there, right? So, you know, like I said, your values have to be aligned. They have to be in sync. Aquarius is all about being in sync with something else. Hence, that's why the glyph looks the way that it looks, because they are vibrating along the same frequency, or at the very least, they are on the same page. You know, even if they are unique, to, if, even if you have two unique individuals that aren't going to see eye to eye on everything, they can still be in vibration with each other. And I think that's something that we have to consider. I think there's so many people out there that, you know, they'll hear things like your vibe attracts your tribe and, you know, whether or not they're in sync with somebody. But it's like they forget that the other person is their own unique individual with their own unique chart, their own unique circumstances. But then, the moment that there is a little bit of challenge or a little bit of resistance, then apparently that person is insert however many words you know, like misogynistic, narcissistic, blah, 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 this thing, that thing. At the moment that there's like a slight hint of resistance, people have these days have a tendency to freak out and then they have a tendency to be like, oh no, we're not vibing. You know, and I'm like, well, you know. Yeah, some days me and my wife aren't always vibing, if you will. But that doesn't mean that I'm going to just run away from the relationship. It doesn't mean I'm going to throw the relationship in the trash just because we may not be fully in sync that day. Things happen, right? So, of course, with this Mars here, it's going to have a tendency to be a little bit more impulsive. And it's going to have a tendency to want to act and do something about it, you know, with the square over to Jupiter. And Jupiter, of course, is wanting to give us some beautiful things. It's wanting to expand on a lot of these beautiful things. But like I said, it's going to come down to whether or not you trust yourself, whether or not you can find value in the things that you are bringing to the table. That's the other part about this. What the value that you're bringing to the table in these, in these particular relationships and of course, we do have the moon, which is going to shift into Libra. So even from an emotional standpoint, we're going to start to be more focused on relating to people as it is, right? So 
We're going to see that moon that's going to shift into Libra. It's going to try and over to Pluto today out here at one degrees. So we do get a nice harmonious aspect here. But of course, the moon is with the south node now, right? And it's making an aspect over to Pluto, which is not the easiest energy to deal with, especially you got the moon, which is very, very personal, very emotional, you know, and then you have Pluto, which is very, doesn't really give a fuck. It's more generational, doesn't really care necessarily about the human emotion. It's more like these larger generational transformative aspects, right? And it's here in Aquarius, right? So that's the interesting thing about this. It's a harmonious aspect. We'll feel it briefly, you know, for like maybe a couple of hours, but, you know, it's going to be sort of like feeling into how human relationships are kind of transforming in a huge way right now. And the way that we're able to relate to each other, the way that we're able to build with each other, the way that we're able to create with each other, a lot of these things are shifting, you know, forever, to be fair, forever. And learning how to try and navigate, learning how to navigate this sphere right now, learning how to navigate these energies when we know that things are shifting. You know, you even think about it, technology has shifted the way that we related to that we relate to each other. Aquarius is technology. So like the way that people relate to each other has shifted because of technology, because of the internet, because of texting, because of social media. And you can argue to say that it has improved it. You can argue to say that it has uh, damaged it. You could argue both ways. I think in the positive way, we do have people that would have never had a voice a hundred years ago that are able to have a voice, that are able to impact people, they're able to make something of themselves, they're able to connect with people because now it's you're not just getting your information through one, two, or three different avenues that everyone's kind of suckered into. Now we have a multitude of different ways of people that can express themselves. That's the positive way. The negative aspect of it is that now people probably only feel comfortable, you know, expressing themselves through these different media and they can't go out in the public and do it. Or you have the keyboard warriors that will only say the nastiest, craziest shit online to people, but they can't say anything like face to face because they just hide behind a screen. Or the people that have like severe, bad, crippling social anxiety and they can't connect with people face to face, but they can only do it through a screen because there's like that protective filter there, you know. And like I said, I'm not judging anybody, you know what I'm saying? We all have some level to where technology has affected the way that we communicate with each other. I'm just providing the examples for you guys to show that it has affected communication. It has affected relatability. Some people, the only way they're able to relate to people is through the internet. For some people, it augments their, already, their reality already of how they connect with people in person, right? So that's the thing about this. And I think with a trine like this, and of course with the Mars that's squaring over to Jupiter, it's just going to be highlighting more of how the way that we relate to each other has transformed forever because of this because of this technology. And the thing is that societies they rise and fall. We've had technology like this before on this planet. It just has been thousands and thousands and thousands of years, but those societies have they risen and they fallen. And now we're another one, if you will. But I believe that we've had technology very similar to this that's existed on the planet before. But wh where is it now? Well, I mean, shoot, things happen. Freaking sun probably knocked out a bunch of the technology, if you will, with these different coronal mass ejections and probably fried everything. And then it kind of took things back to like the roots. We have to learn how to be able to connect with each other, even outside of and without these sort of things. We saw what happened last week with the whole AT and T thing, with all those, all everyone, a lot of people lost their cell service, and then they, they had to figure out how to navigate this world without technology. You know what I mean? Like they had to actually, actually use like maps, and they actually had to like figure out like, oh snap, if I'm supposed to, people rely so much 
on these things? What happens when these things don't work anymore? And it can happen, you know what I'm saying? So I think that's that's the other thing about this. We have to be able to be resilient and we have to be resourceful. That's the other thing about Taurus is that it's resourceful. It talks about resources, you know? So this Jupiter and this Uranus here is teaching us how to be a lot more resourceful and to, you know, appreciate those different resources that we have. It, let's just say your cell service knocks out and you can't, you know, you're using a GPS to try and find your way somewhere and it goes out. You have to go buy a map and you have to be able to navigate with the map. You know what I'm saying? So that's a resource. Do you know how to use that resource? That's the other part about this. You know how to use that resource? So I think a day like, you know, I think with these energies that are happening right now, the, what we're starting to see, and of course, these energies are going to be moving to the square with Neuron. So that's going to be more something that happens in March. It's not going to happen this month. But we're, we're going to start to see that the technology that we have is not inherently negative. It's not inherently bad. But we need to have backup contingency plans. We need to know how to do things the old-fashioned way as well. But I think there's so many people that are just, they just disdain the old-fashioned. They turn their nose up at the old-fashioned. But we need to incorporate some of that. We need to know how to do that stuff as well. Just like, shoot, what happens, yeah, if the cell service goes out and then you get a flat and then you can't call AAA or a tow truck and then you do have a spare tire, you got to learn how to put, you got to learn how to change your own tire, your own flat, you know, different things like that. So this is about being self-sufficient. This is about being self-reliant, you know, then I think that's the other aspect here. And we have to learn how to be more self-reliant. We have to be, we have to learn how to you know, how can we survive and do these things on our own and rely on our own skills? And if we don't have those skills, we got to go learn those skills. Jupiter is also about, it's also about learning. It's about education. We got to go get those skills. We got to learn, right? So that's the main thing really with today. This room, I'm going to see, of course, like I said, that moon shifting into Libra. It's going to come off with that trying to Pluto. And then, of course, like I said, we do have Mars and Jupiter, which are going to be in square to each other pretty much the entire day. The square doesn't really apex, honestly, until early Tuesday morning. And then, of course, we're coming into a day of just like building energy, if you will. So let's go ahead and hop into the cards. I know it's a bit of a short one today, just because, like I said, there's not really a whole, whole lot going on. But like I said, with the moon moving in Libra, we are going to be a little bit more focused on those relationships in our life. And then, of course, like I said, with that Mars squaring over to Jupiter, it definitely can, it's going to highlight, I guess you could say, some of the challenges that we may experience when relating to each other and maybe the certain actions that we take or just our identity as well. Because Mars does rule the first house naturally, which can be all about identity and stuff. So there can be some challenges when it comes to, you know, maybe expressing our identity and whether or not we can relate to other people and whether or not other people may see value in those, in those, in those sort of things. And then if they don't necessarily get or vibrate with us, there can be some challenges there. There can be some volatility there potentially, but we got to also learn that not everyone's going to per se get us. So we have to just, you know, if they, if they don't necessarily get us, it's probably best to just chill out today especially with this moon in Libra, it's probably, it's probably best to not try and get too up in arms about things and try and like over explain yourself. Cause I feel like the moment that you over explain yourself is the moment that you lose anyways. So it's probably best to just let bygones be bygones, you know, and to just kind of just ride it, ride this one out, especially considering the fact that we have this major Cassini that's building up in Pisces and it's getting more and more intense right so that already in and of itself sun mercury saturn that already in and of itself is going to cause a major major shift that's going to probably have some sort i don't know what's going to exactly happen like international or national wise but some type of event's going to happen that's going to shift everyone's perception in a major way it is pro it's probably going to be one of these major red pill blue pill moments 
it, her white pill, black pill moments. It's going to be all of those pills pretty much in one. It's going to be like a mega dose pill of reality, of, you know, perception shattering, of hope, of despair. It's going to be a mega dose pill of all of that. And it's going to be about whether or not, you know, what timeline are we going to pick? Because this is Saturn involved here. What timeline are we going to pick? You know, so that's what we're building up to. Just letting y'all know. <laughs> now, card wise for the day, I do have the eight of pentacles. This is one of my favorite cards. This is one of my favorite cards. This is the in the lab card. This is focusing on your craft. And you see, when it comes to this too, no one else can tell you to do this. This is why I was talking about the self-reliance thing. You have to be able to rely on your own merits, on your own strengths, and your own ability, your own will to get the job done. That's what I love about the Eight of Pentacles. No one is telling the spider to do this. It is intrinsic to it. You know, it is intrinsic for the spider to be able to weave this, but no one's telling the spider to weave this web. Because the spider knows that if it doesn't weave this web, it's probably going to die. It's not going to be able to catch its food. It's not going to be able to survive, right? But you have to be able to get in the lab and get in the gym and do and crank out those reps. This is about cranking out the reps. And no one is going to tell you to do this. Like I said, no one told Kobe to get to the gym three hours before everyone else and to make sure that he got in his thousands of free throws before anyone else or any of his teammates stepped into the gym. No one told him to do that. But it's because that he did that that made him one of the greatest players of all time. You know what I'm saying? So – it's the work that people don't see. A lot of times we want to, we are so focused on the work that we want people to see all the things that we're doing. We want people to see our value, but it's uh, many times the work that we, that people don't see. It's all of that stuff that really makes a massive difference, right? We have that followed by the seven of pentacles. I think it's interesting how we get the seven of pentacles after the eight of pentacles. I think this is just coming down to like, you know, we can harvest from the fruits of our own labor, you know, we can enjoy the fruits of our own labor. It's interesting how, you know, in this in the tarot, the seven, the seven of pentacles comes first. It's like the harvest comes first and appreciating the fruits of our labor. And the eight of pentacles reminds us that even after we do that, there's still work to be done. But with the here, it's kind of reversed. It's like, you know what? Putting in that hard work is what's going to yield us the fruits, what's going to yield a beautiful harvest. And we have to just remember that, you know, bottom of the deck, I do have the page of wands. I do really like this. Remember the page? I like to call the pages the students. And this is like, she's like a fire fairy playing the violin here. You know, this is about remaining inspired, remaining motivated. This is about, you know, we, know, we need to look to see where our motivations are, what does inspire us. Remember to just keep that. Remember to stay inspired, stay creative, keep moving forward. Yes, there's going to be some hard work here. Yes, there's a lot of, we, we feel like all of the hours that we put in that people don't see, of course, we want to get paid for that. You know what I mean? But we are going to get paid for that. You know, it's, it's spirit that sees that. It's God that sees that. You know what I'm saying? It, it's your higher self that sees that. And that's what's most important. So it's about, you know, remembering what we can bring to the table, self-reliance, self-accountability. I know all these things that are super scary for a lot of y'all, <laughs> myself included. But doing so, we're going to be able to reap the fruits of our labor. You know, we're going to be able to appreciate the fruits of our labor. You know, cherry. Live an extraordinary life. So we have to remind ourselves to live an extraordinary life every single day. You know, find the ex extraordinary in everyday living. And you know, sometimes it may be hard to see that, but it's about appreciate, appreciating the whole thing. You know, it's one thing to appreciate the project when it's finished, but being able to find the joy in the project when you're in the when you're in the heat of it, when you're in the middle of actually doing that thing, learning how to find the cherry on top. In that situation, right? So we gotta learn how to find a cherry on top in those situations. That is going to do it for your daily astrology forecast today. I hope that you all enjoyed it. I hope that this message assists you on your journey today. If you did enjoy this, please like, share, and subscribe. I definitely appreciate it. If you would like to have a personal reading with me, with me beloved, so you can see how these transits are affecting you personally, please follow the link in the description below to my website, jphoenix.com. And as always, y'all take care. Stay blessed. Have a wonderful Monday. 
I will see you all on the next astrology forecast. Peace out. <laughs>